Hi everyone. So in today's class, um, this was a um, request by one of our subscribers. So very much um, influenced <laughs> um, today's class. So we are going to break down sun salutation. But in breaking down the sun salutation, I will give you options for each pose. So what you can do um, if you are working your plank, what you can do if you're working your chaturanga, what you can do for um, if you're working your downward facing dog. So enjoy. Okay, so if you are um, working on your Tadasana or mountain pose, or basically how to stand up um, when you're in a yoga class, okay. so think about how um, you would feel balanced on your feet. Okay, so um, I've talked about this before where in some traditions, um, they'll have you bring your toes together, heels slightly apart, okay? And you can explore how that feels for you. If it feels too narrow, a bit wobbly, then go ahead, bring your feet hip width apart. Okay, and if that still does not feel balanced for you, then maybe you'll have to bring your feet even slightly wider. So the objective is bringing your feet to where you are, um, feeling balanced and able to um, press down on the heels and then maybe even press down on the toes Now when you start to reach your arms up, okay, you know, I know I, I'll um, hit a bit of my ceiling here when you reach your arms up <clears> Hey, <throat> okay, if Reaching the hands directly right above the head feels or you're coming into this shape where your shoulders are starting to lift up or your elbows are even slightly bent. I'll show from the side, okay? You can bring your hands slightly forward, okay? Or maybe even a little bit wider, okay? So the objective is when you reach your arms up, we're trying to find this. Okay. So if this, the lengthening that also comes from the side waist, okay, this makes you do this, then bring your hand slightly in front. Okay. So there are a lot of um, variations that um, we can make in Tadasana. Or maybe when you bring your arms out to the sides instead of directly up over the head, maybe you'll bring it slightly in front. Okay. So that is for your mountain pose. Okay. So when you stand up <clears throat> and then the teacher would cue you, inhale, reach the arms up. So either off to the side or maybe even out front. Okay. So you can explore that, play around with that. All right. So different variations in mountain pose. Okay. Next, if we are um, working towards folding forward, okay. so from mountain pose or from Tadasana, it's to reach down towards the floor. Okay. Now, if your hands don't touch the floor, that's completely fine. Okay. So maybe that's why um, we are in our yoga journey to help stretch out the hamstrings. Okay. You can for sure use your blocks. Okay. Definitely use your blocks. <clears throat> if you need your platform to be higher, that's why we have the props. Okay? But if you don't have your blocks, and being in this um, shape is not super comfortable, then you can go ahead, bend the knees as much as you like so you can get your maybe fingertips down. Okay? So you can explore that. And then from here, okay, um, in the halfway lift, Either bring your hands on your shins or maybe even on your thighs so that you're able to straighten out the legs and then you can look forward halfway. Okay. And then maybe if this is more comfortable, maybe you'll start to bring your hands on the shins. Okay. And then maybe when the hamstrings are starting to cooperate a bit more, maybe we'll be on our fingertips. Okay. So again, several options here in the halfway lift. Okay. Now, from this um, shape, transitioning to plank, okay? Definitely bend the knees as much as you need to so you can get your hands down, maybe palms down. And then we'll step back first into tabletop, okay? So if plank is something that you are working on or working towards too. So in plank pose, we have one foot back followed by the other. Okay. So plank is um, a good way to build strength or also a, a nice gauge um, to see how we feel when we're weight-bearing. Okay. 
So if you feel all of the weight is on the wrists or the hips are starting to sag, I would um, suggest to maybe practice it from tabletop first. Okay? Now from here, you'll curl your toes and then from here, we'll start to lift the knees away from the mat. Okay? So it's um, still the same effort okay? because we would want for the hands to press down and then the shoulders to push away. Okay? So working that upper body and the trunk. And then the legs, we have them bent okay? uh, or the knees bent so that you can feel okay, the quads, okay, breathing in and out. And then we'll slowly lower down. Okay, let me quickly <laughs> wipe off my sweat. So you can also build the sweat. Some sweat, <clears throat> sorry, some sweat working in floating tabletop. Okay. Now again, you don't have um, to hold it that long. Definitely come in and out of it. <clears throat> now, if you have a block, you can place your block in between the thighs. Okay. If you don't have a block, you can roll up a towel, a bath towel. Essentially for a prop um, to give you feedback if you are using your thighs okay, and holding floating tabletop or plank. Okay, so we'll give it a try. So you'll spread the fingers wide, zip up, okay, engage the core okay, for support, um, supporting the lower back. And then from here, squeeze the block <clears throat> as you lift it away from the floor okay, as you breathe in and out. Now, as you stay here, see um, if you're feeling a little bit comfortable, maybe you'll start to walk the toes back and then come into plank okay, as you breathe in and out. Okay, one more breath here. And then from here, we'll bring the knees down okay, and then we'll take the block off to the side. All right, so that is for plank. Now, going through the sun salutation. Um, if you are working... Um, your chaturanga so there are also a lot of um, different ways to modify that but one good way to um, build more uh, let's say more mindfulness in our um, yoga push-up is starting from tabletop as well okay so from here okay you'll keep on pushing the same effort that we do in plank but then the difference is we'll start to reach forward. So this is the reaching forward component okay, in Chaturanga. And then as you start to lower down or bend the elbows, keep reaching forward, reaching forward, reaching forward as you lower all the way down. Okay. I'll come back up again. Now, um, oftentimes what I also see in modified Chaturanga is this. When they reach forward, um, you'll bring down the hips first bring the hips down and then as if we're coming down into um, a reverse uh, upward facing dog. Okay. Now, if that is something that you are working um, with, work on drawing in, hugging, reach as you bend. So as you transition, as you move, as the elbows bend, keep reaching, reaching, reaching forward so that the belly and the chest can lower down at the same time. Okay, versus, okay, we'll explore that again. Versus, as you reach forward, we'll lower down the hips first, tummy down, and then chest down. Okay, so you can explore doing that <clears throat> one more time. Imagine again, the block is there, or you can keep using the block or your rolled up towel. Keep pushing, reach forward, and then as you start to bend the elbows, keep reaching forward, and then we'll lower down. Okay, we'll point the toes back. And then <clears throat> for the back bend, okay, either you can stay in cobra. And then imagine you're holding um, a ball between the elbows or trying to press the elbows towards your midline, rolling the shoulders away from the floor, okay, breathing in and out. So you can stay in this baby cobra. Okay, or maybe you can come up to a higher cobra. I've been calling this a mama cobra. Okay, if you feel comfortable here, we'll straighten through the elbows. We'll lift the thighs off the mat for upward facing dog. Okay. And then we'll curl the toes into downward facing dog. Now in down dog, if this is something that you are um, working with, I'll bring down my um, knees. Again, from tabletop. Now if you feel, um, uh, sorry, there are a lot of ways that we can work downward facing dog from tabletop okay now if you feel in your down dog 
you're somewhere in between plank and downward facing dog. Okay? You can bend the knees and then focus on pushing with the hands. Okay? So when you push away from the hands, the reaction is your butt will reach back. Okay? So that is um, one foundation in downward facing dog. Okay? So you can bend the knees if hamstrings are a little bit tight and stay here. Okay? Now, if um, another variation that you can work with, okay, you will bring the knees down. You will reach your arms forward, okay, maybe towards the corners of your mat. Okay? And then from here, we'll start to press the chest down towards um, the mat. Okay? So this, this would also be a nice um, release for the upper back. But then as you press your chest down, you want the belly to hug in. So finding that support. Okay, so your arms are pressing away, finding that length. But we have the knees down here. Yes, okay, you breathe in and out. So one more breath here. And then from here, we'll come up. Okay, we'll come back to tabletop. So again, we'll press up into downward facing dog. Okay, so a lot of modifications that you can do in any of those um, poses, especially if you are in a uh, vinyasa class. Namaste. So I hope that was very helpful for you. Know that there are always uh, modifications or options that you can do um, in working the different poses, the shapes, or asanas. So make sure to um, like and subscribe or even comment or send me a message so I can help you with your yoga journey. I would like to thank you for watching. This is Every Yoga by Jo and Daya, sharing everyday yoga for everybody.